All right. What's going on, bro? <laughs> okay, this is part two in a series that I just decided I'm going to start off making. And I asked you in the last video if you want me to continue with this thing, which is basically 15 years of X in 15 minutes. In this video, I'm going to go through 15 years of studying bodybuilding passionately as a skinny ectomorph twig Indian kid that needed to find out every single thing that possibly exists in terms of pre periodization programming, anything to do with weight training. I've left not a single tone un stone unturned to try and get uh, help me get the maximum amount of muscle that I possibly can. In terms of the client results, in terms of my own results, check out my own pictures on here, my own mother's transformation on here. There's a 15 year old kid that I put on that we put on 60 pounds on together so far. There's kids that I've put on 30 pounds uh, that have lost 30 pounds while putting on eight to 10 pounds of uh, lean body mass. And in the first uh, six months or something working together, and I have guys benching 100 pound dumbbells again in the first four months. How did all this stuff happen? I'm going to short form all, every single thing that I've learned about tr bodybuilding training and everything else in 15 minutes. Let's get right into it. All right, bro. So um, let me start off with the stopwatch first. Boom. Okay, bodybuilding training, right? The training to build muscle, uh, whether it's bodybuilding training or aesthetic training, I'm actually even going to touch upon a little bit of powerlifting, Olympic lifting or something if required to make my points clearer in terms of bodybuilding and aesthetics and everything else. The person that I speak to, my guy, is you, who is the guy that wants to maximize his aesthetics for real life, right? Now, you can, now, in order to maximize your aesthetics, you need to be doing bodybuilding training, right? You may not want to look like one of these fucking, uh, what, what's the word I'm going to be looking for? These Neanderthal fucking monkey apes uh, that are walking around right now. They can barely even walk. However, the principles that they use to build their physique are going to be the same principles that you and I use to build our physique in order to maximize our genetics and maximize our aesthetics, in order to look the best that we can look, in order to maximize our life, right? So, again, we need to be learning from these guys, but the the uh, the irony here is like most of these guys are genetically gifted fucking freaks that they can look at a bunch of dumbbells and become fucking huge, right? So we have to understand how much of it actually makes sense versus how much of it doesn't. Now, getting into bodybuilding training once again. Let me actually just take you through all of the guys that are working with me and how we're making the maximum, the fastest possible gains. Like within the first four to six weeks, we, we're smashing lifetime PRs, right? And the reason for this is pretty simple. We aren't doing dog shit workouts like push pull legs and we aren't doing bodybuilding bro splits. And we, I don't even know what else to be uh, putting, <laughs> throwing under the bus at this point in time. But if you are starting off right now, you do not need any form of complexity in your training whatsoever. All right. One of the most common things that I actually hear from people is uh, for, for, from people that are within their first two years to three years, even within their first year and a half or something of training is uh, my bicep is my weak point. Uh, my pecs are my weak point. Uh, my this thing is my weak point. My calves, my legs, my quad sweep is my weak point. I'm like, bro, your entire existence is a weak point. Right. So let's say if you're 18 years old, you don't know if you're literally the entirety of your existence is the fucking B point. You don't even know how to make any money. You don't know how to socialize. You don't know how to talk to anyone. You don't know anything about your own fucking mental health. You don't know anything about anything about anything, bro. Your entire existence is fucking a weak point, right? So when you step into the gym, you're not going to like if I if I just started cooking, I'm not going to be like baking is a weak point. I'm like, no, bro, I know nothing about cooking whatsoever. Everything is a weak point. So you have to put in like two to three years. And then you realize, okay, I'm good at frying. I'm good at fucking something else or blah, 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 sauteing or some shit. And then I'm now I, but I realize I'm pretty weak at baking, right? So your first two to three years, your entire first three years of training, or at the very least, your first year to year and a half of training, you don't even need more than six to eight moves. They should all be compound based moves. You barely need any kind of isolation. To be extremely honest, you barely need any kind of isolation. But I will add a little bit of isolation into your programming and such. And I'll explain to you why they're even important and such. You just need to be doing the basic six moves. You just need to be doing them in the, in the right rep ranges and with the right amount of volume. The only type of progressive overload that you need, the only way that you need to know that you're actually getting further and further and further is not by how many more reps you're getting, is not by how many more sets you're getting, is not by how much faster you're lifting the weight, is not by how less of your rest times or something that you're getting, um, uh, getting the same weight work done, rest, none of that shit. 
within the first three years of training, all you need to be doing is putting on more weight on the bar, more weight on the bar, more weight on the bar, more weight on the bar. Now there's a little bit of periodization in programming that happens obviously from time to time. This could be every two to three weeks or every four weeks or every six. Like for my training, every, so the first eight weeks we go for is like, technique and strength and after that i take them into strength hypertrophy or just hypertrophy and then i take them into endurance and then so on and so forth and so on and so forth so i do change things up here and there and obviously within those little blocks and everything all the first eight weeks we change things up there as well but the training is so goddamn simple right so you want you your complexity in training has to be extremely simple you don't need to have any you legit don't even need to know the rp system you don't need to know the rir system most people are under one year of training, don't even know what an RP or RIR is. Even if you study it, you will still not understand how it is. And this is what most coaches, like even Renaissance Periodization and, and uh, Mike Rizardell and blah, 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 people keep on talking about, even like uh, Johnny Candido and such, they keep talking about this, how, how young, young people in the, like newbies, intermediates, don't even know what an RP or RIR is because they don't even know how to push themselves, right? So that's, you don't need RP systems, RIR system or something else. You do not need bands, chains, um, any kind of ex extra equipment, belts, blah, 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 blah. Like you don't need any extra shit in the first three years of your training. Again, everything is literally just the primary progress progressive overload of the weights going up. Uh, even the kid that I put on like 56 pounds or he put on like 60 pounds or something in the first year and a half of his training before coming to me, he was doing some kind of John Meadows superhero workout, something, something, something right now, uh, please put a picture of myself with John up there. I love John. I've, I've actually spoken to him in person. I've discussed programming and such with him in person. And of course he knows what he's talking about, but still the level of his complexity of his training programming is this high for a kid that just came in and barely stepped into the gym. Uh, in the other Derek video or something, I made the same thing too is like again he's talking about advanced things that are up here and most people don't even know how to eat right and train right properly and as soon as you fix these things right here they are getting better than steroid like gains because these guys have been enhanced not the 15 year old kid but these other guys have been enhanced in the past and have still gotten dog shit results and and you know when they finally come to me i'm like bro your training is basic not like your training is is a, a subpar your nutrition knowledge is subpar let's fake the most basic pillars of your training and everything else and your results are going to start like free falling pretty much. It's going to be insane. Um, besides that, let's see. So I mentioned the most important thing. You don't need to be doing any me metabolic acid, lactic acid accumulation based training and blah, 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 blah. Let's, let's touch upon some of the Olympias and whether high rep training makes sense or low rep training makes sense or what kind of training makes sense. And we'll also touch upon some like periodization programming a little bit in the whole thing as well, right? So we have seen the absolute best uh, Olympias being created based off of high rep training with Jay Cutler and I'm just trying to think at this point, but uh, I think Phil Heath is high rep training as well. I'm not sure. Fuck, who's the the Irish dragon guy? I forget the guy's name, bro. He's so good. But that guy's another high rep training guy. Um, and we have a low rep training guys that have become absolute fucking monsters as well. Uh, with Ronnie Coleman, obviously, and with uh, Dorian Yates, right? So clearly everything works, right? Now, there is no one superior form of training compared to another. It really comes down to what is optimal for you. And I'll be very, very honest. If you have my kind of genetics, if you have, if you're Indian genetics, you're literally just, you're not a physical specimen to begin with, bro. I can do your taxes for you. I can, I can cure cancer for you. I can do all these kinds of different things. I can explain things to, uh, in the big, with the most advanced complexity in the most simplest form. Forms, but I can't lift weights, bro. <laughs> That's not something that I can do. That's not something that I'm gifted for. However, um, and if I were to start doing the really, really high intensity, uh, really high strength based kind of training, my body would literally break down. So I have had to design a certain way of training where I can touch upon this thing, build up my strength, uh, base and my my power base and so on and so forth so that i can maximize it in my hypertrophy phase and my uh sarcoplasmic hypertrophy phase this is my fibrillar strength base and sarcoplasmic hypertrophy is a size base so i have to do just enough amount of this so that i can get the maximum benefits out of it but also not get injured and then move it into here so that i can get the maximum amount of muscle and strength gains out of it and also just not get injured but also just not have anything to transfer over so that i don't make any gains whatsoever either so that's getting a little bit uh, complex. Let me explain that to you. Okay, so we've saw, we've seen that Ronnie Coleman has his own method of training. 
And we've seen Dorian Yates having his own method of training. What's really common between both of these guys, and these guys are both savage monsters, is that they're both broken down and injured. Now, Ronnie Coleman, obviously, sadly, is like the worst broken down specimen or something. And again, sadly, he's he's kind of the person that we now use as an example of what not to do and what high intensity training all the fucking time, like just literally destroying yourself and crushing yourself into the ground every single time can actually do for you. So that's, it's really sad, uh, honestly, but but at least it shows you an example of how that can go if you literally push it to an extreme. For that matter, didn't Dorian Yates, Dorian Yates uh, blew, blew up his tricep or tore off his tricep or something? Maybe also, oh, sorry, it was his bicep during one of the Olympias or something. And I think he also tore off his pec or something as far as I can remember. But yeah, again, all of the, dude, the, what is that other? I don't even want this picture to be, just, just put in a picture, don't put in the video where this kid's, Peck literally tore off and he was trying to go for like a one rep max or something. Fuck, that was like really gory as fuck. I don't want to watch that. But um, but that's that that's not gonna happen at low intensity training, right? That isn't something that happens at low intensity training. It's only when you're pushing yourself to the absolute max limits is when that kind of stuff happens. So as a matter of fact, let me actually tell you this. And this is the most brilliant. Uh, fuck, I should make a separate video about this. But this is the most brilliant piece of advice that anybody can ever give you for training. And I think John Meadows mentioned this a couple of times here and there, but it was always in passing and nobody ever put any value to it is like, make sure that you do not get injured. So for those of you that don't know, I'm actually a Harvard strength and conditioning coach and a McMaster strength and conditioning coach. And I've worked with athletes here that have like fucking Olympic in the single same team of Olympic fencing or something. There's six kids that have like Olympic gold medals or something. And like so many other guys have been to the NBA, NFL and blah, 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 blah. And so many other guys here at McMaster as well. My primary function was not really to improve their functioning and their strength and their potential and so on and so forth. The primary function of a strength and conditioning coach is actually to make sure that your athletes don't get injured. That's literally the primary function of a strength and conditioning coach, that your athletes do not get injured because your athlete is gifted. He was a born gifted athlete already. They already have the talent. The genetic talent is already there. They have been, they're really good with their skill or something. They love their sport or something. So they're already an amazing athlete. The worst thing you could do is take an already amazing athlete and injure them so that they can never play again. The best thing you can do is I mean, the worst, uh, second worst thing is like, okay, you just make him like not injured, but not improve his performance or something. But if you can make sure that he doesn't get injured and even improve his performance by 5%, that's more than good enough, right? Because the athlete is already fucking amazing. Similarly in bodybuilding, if you get injured, like I think I put in my deadlift that I had like whatever, 10 years ago or something you, that you used recently in the 2012, 2013 video or something, but I had like a cat pack deadlift back then. The four plate Z's deadlift, that thing that I had, I had a cat pack deadlift back then. This was like, I don't even know how many, ten, this is 10 years ago or something. And uh, those deadlifts did not hurt me. But I do remember other deadlifts where I actually pulled my back in the middle of the fucking deadlift. I had three reps in my in my side. And I pulled my, uh, something tweak or something weird happened in the second rep. And I still went fucking full macho man mode and actually pulled the third rep. And then I actually ended up pulling something for like the next two weeks or three weeks or a month or something. And that's just fucking dumb, right? Like I never let any of my my uh, guys ever do anything dumb like that. If, if anybody gets hurt about anything, you'll back off and then we'll come back in again, right? It's always better you can come back in like two three weeks like completely recovered anyways as opposed to breaking your shit down and then having to wait for three months and then always having something painful or something so the worst uh, mistake that you can ever make is to get yourself injured in the midst of your training so please try and stay away from training uh uh maxing out or something going going the whole series or that that side we're going to do a bit of a tangent right there, right? But again, honestly, if, uh, in 15 years, if the best inf uh, piece of information I can give you is just don't get injured, then you'll have like infinite more amount of time to learn a bunch more stuff. Okay, so we did that, we did that. Okay, what is the best rep range? <clears throat> Here's how uh, uh, training is supposed to be maximized and which nobody talks about. This is why there's no one best program Except for my program, of course. But <laughs> but even that's the reason why my program works the best way that it possibly does and gets all these results. See, you have a uh, different, uh, let's say type two X fibers within the one to three or one to four rep range. Then you have the type two A fibers, type two X and type two B are the same. Type two A fibers that would work best in the four to eight rep range. And then you have eight to 12 plus would be the other, uh, uh, there's a, a mix of type two and then type one and so on and so forth. Now the goal is, so these ones are just, the, the, the type two ones uh, are the ones that hypertrophy the most. Uh, and the type ones hypertrophy very little, uh, if anything. 
but your goal is to keep switching between one to the other to the other one to the other to the other one to the other to the other so that you can build the strength base move into hypertrophy base get a little bit of endurance and stuff so that the lactic acid clearance improves and then you uh, rinse and repeat rinse and repeat rinse and repeat right this is why no one push pull legs is ever going to work no one high intensity body uh, no, no during it's only method of training isn't going to work the fst7 only blood pump work isn't only going to work because it'll only work for a certain amount of time three months six months or whatever and then you have to change it because the rate of adaptation or something is always going to go down right which is again where my hypertrophy kind of strength based thing comes in because my rep range is between four to eight you have the perfect mix of volume you have the perfect mix of reps and you have the perfect uh, method of progression which is progressive overload and if at any point in time something changes i change the programming immediately so that you keep switching between one, two, and three, one, two, and three, and one, two, and three. And again, even the guys that come to me that have been training for three plus years, five plus years, again, I have them breaking PRs in the first four to six weeks, right? Within the first four to six weeks. So your most important thing, do not get injured. Secondly, keep switching up your training from time to time. Stay away from like the dogma of there's one uh, one godly method of training or something or like one godly rep range or something or something of that sort. And that's pretty much it, I think. Now, obviously, this could be so much longer. It's like training. It's like training for fucking forever, dude. I like so many stories and so many things that I can go into. But I think this is like a 15 minute limit. This is all I can come up with right now. I'm just trying to think if there's anything else that would be extra um, ultra important, valuable, or something right now. Hi, rep, low rep. Uh, hi, rep. This, this, this. Stay away from injuries. That's done. Um, keep switching between these things. That's done. Most people in the world don't even know about the whole fucking periodization programming and everything else, which is the whole baseline. The whole point of periodization programming is to keep having infinite gains as opposed to making gains for like a little bit and then boom, plateauing after that. So that's the whole point of periodization programming. That's all I can think of about at this point, to be honest. All right, bro. If you enjoyed this video, please help me out with a like, comment, share, subscribe, so on and so forth with the YouTube algorithm. Check out a bunch of my client testimonials. Check out my own body transformation. I even have my the transformation of my own uh, mom on this thing as well. Um, in tier three of my coaching, I actually help you guys get the girls that you want. I help you guys get the pickup skills, the social skills, uh, self-esteem, self-worth skills. I help you guys become financially independent. All these things come up in tier three of coaching. So if you want to transform your entire life, starting with your own body transformation, fill out the calendar link in the description box below and besides that i hope you all have a great evening and she'll see you all next time peace